So for this video we are taking on the cultists meeting place on master but this time we are going to go with no disguise. Uh, this means we are using our own deck. But we're going to use a mid-range monk deck that takes advantage of a lot of summon effects. So things that trigger when the creatures enter play. Uh, that's because they are going to trigger twice when we play them in the right hand lane which is kind of a big deal. Uh, one of the things to note is that when you don't use the disguise uh, the guards kind of figure you out, if you will. So we do run some things to kind of help tamper down the, the early game. And uh, Marked Man is one of the things that we use. Merc Water Witch is one of the things that we use. Um, just to kind of stall. The reason Marked Man works out so well is because when you play them over here, uh, as you're going to see, Wait. Did you hear that? we get some makeshift defenses. Wait. And the makeshift defenses when they die actually come back as 1-1 one, one guards, which kind of helps. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We can always do the Merc Water Witch thing next turn. So, these kind of come back as 1-1s, one, and then when these die, they enter play again, and then we get new copies of the defenses. Um, it's kind of like an interesting, neat tech. Uh, the one downside is we do have uh, Grim Champions that get bigger and bigger and bigger. But uh, Sanctuary Pets do help dealing, do help in dealing with that, I guess I should say. And we do want to get the Sanctuary Pet active, so... Uh, let's go ahead, let's get this cycle through. Now, they will get the Harpy back as well, which means they get another Shackle here. Not necessarily the the biggest I'll deal in the world. Um, let's just go ahead and get that harpy out of the way. Again, we'll get our makeshift defenses back. So interesting, fun tech with the marked man, and we'll go ahead and shackle that. We're gonna hold on to this because again, it's it's really good here. Eventually we'll have to deal with that left lane. You'll notice in the deck list that we do also run like Execute to deal with some of this. Uh, we haven't drawn it, obviously, but that is why we run it. Uh, this if will work fall, just as well. Haunting Spirit is also a pretty amazing tech because of the last gasp. Uh, Night of the Hour is also good because, again, summon effect of uh, gain health is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, let's get this out of the way takes that out. He does get the 1-1 version back. But we're going to go ahead and just do that as well. Chaos take you. Let's go ahead and just get that out of the way. And I'll take them with me. Probably was a misplay on the shackle there, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, let's go ahead and give ourselves yet yeah, another Did you hear that? Makeshift defenses does get the guy back and how do we want to do this rock water here trades even with this let's just get that out of the way as well let's get one of our defenses down and call that good all right Death comes to us all. it's probably gonna hit this oh no he takes that all right fair Decide how we want to handle it. Well, I was kind of hoping for a slightly different outcome. If I fall, I'll take them with me. All right, so now we are. Uh, Doing all right with fighting for this lane, which is the important part. Now we just need a couple of cards to take advantage of the shenanigans. Uh, other really good things in the list are like Bruma Profiteer, because with all this reanimating, you get. Uh, see, this is also good. 
you get a bunch of health back. Um, things like East March Crusader and Thieves Guild Recruit will draw you a bunch of cards. So even though we're light on cards now, it's not really a concern. Uh, Viper is great because both, you know, the reanimated version and the normal version have charge and lethal. So it is a fantastic way to deal with some of these more uh, pesky... Pesky issues. Um, yep, we'll just take out take out the big ones. It's gonna get some more guys back. It's not the end of the world though. Um, I'm actually pretty tempted to just trade even here, if I'm being honest. I think I'll we're gonna do just that. The reason we're gonna do that is because while well, he'll get another skeleton back, um, getting getting this back just trades even with it yet again. Or he can give me a mummy. Which is also fine. Uh, again, yet another really interesting thing for uh, one, prophecy, which is always good, but also just for kind of taking advantage of this lane over here. reasons just like this so we can go ahead and do that do that we'll actually hold on to the pet for now we can be responsive and then we can start like a slow push we're gonna hold on to the dawnbreaker uh he does run some things that uh are kind of annoying to deal with so my power the Dawnbreaker helps with that. This is basically like a non-prophecy javelin, which is nice. He silenced my mummy. Um, I'll do this just because it develops. Save the uh, removal. Hey, look. It's one of those uh, pesky undead things we were saving a Dawnbreaker for. Alright, let's go ahead and do this, and then let's at least get rid of that. Well, we'll give him back a 1-1 uh, a version, obviously. He's going to have a ton of blood magic spells that we can't do a lot with. Uh, let's do this, too, just to get it out of the way. And, yeah, alright. So, it's got a lot of cards, a lot of things you can do, but with a couple of javelins, we're probably alright. So we didn't even get any of our awesome, like, sweet card drawing engines, right? As I said, the East Marches are typically great, but we did get to see uh, the really, really cool Marked Man tech. Uh, it's, it's just really good. For this encounter. Alright, so a couple of different ways that we can handle this, but I think the easiest way is probably just jab. It's gonna get the 1-1 uh, version back, which is fine. We'll uh, run into it with a mummy, because the mummy comes back, and then we can skip the final rune, and voila! There is the No Disguise encounter. So, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the fun tech.